Hello guys, in this video I want to show you epsilon delta proof that limit of x squared when x approaches to 5 is equals to 25 or in other words 5 squared. So if you want to uh, do epsilon delta proof, let's first recover the definition of epsilon delta. So we're saying that limit of x squared when x approaches to 5 is equal to 5 squared if and only if in terms of epsilon and delta. We're saying that for any epsilon bigger than zero, there is exists delta bigger than zero, such that whenever absolute value of x minus 5 is less than delta, then from here that follows uh, x squared minus 5 squared is less than epsilon. And we want to show uh, that this limit exists and is uh, equals to 5 squared by using epsilon delta definition. So let's fix some delta bigger than 0. In other words, we're choosing any delta bigger than 0. And then we want to find our delta where our delta is a function in terms of epsilon. So what we have, we're given that we have any epsilon and we want to find such delta. So we want to assume that this is true first. Okay, so if you want to do this, let's first write x squared minus 5, uh, minus 5 squared. And here, what can we do? We can factor x, minus, uh, x squared minus 5 squared. So we're going to have x minus 5 times x plus 5. And from here, I can write this uh, absolute value of product is product of absolute values. So I have x minus 5 times x plus 5. And from here, I know that uh, x minus 5 must be less than delta. And I have times x plus 5. And here, what I know, I know that the whole thing must be less than epsilon. So I can say this, uh, let's say this is equals to epsilon. So why I said this equals to epsilon? Because I already have uh, a strict sign over here because of x minus 5 less than delta. Here I can see that my delta is in terms of epsilon x. Why? Because from here I can write my delta is equals to epsilon x plus 5. Absolute value of x plus 5. And this doesn't work because I want my delta to be in terms of epsilon purely and want to, I want to get rid of part x plus 5. Another thing you have to think about this, if x minus 5 is less than delta, I want to answer, can I say like x plus 5 is going to be less than something in terms of delta? Okay, if you want to do this problem, let's approach it this way. Let's just write x plus 5 equals to, and we know that x minus 5 is less than delta. So instead of, inside of our absolute value, let's write x minus 5 plus 5 plus 5. So I just add, uh, add 5 and subtract 5. And here I'm going to use triangle inequality. So I will get that absolute value of x minus 5 plus uh, 5 plus 5, 10 plus absolute value of 10. And I know that absolute value of 10 uh, is positive, so it's just plus 10. And from here, we'll get that x minus 5 is less than delta plus 10. So what I got? I got that our x plus 5 is less than delta plus 10. So in other words, it means I can take this x plus 5, plug in this inequality, and let's just do it for a second. And I'm going to erase this. Uh, let's just do it for a second. So it's going to be equal delta, delta plus 10 equals to delta square plus 10 delta. But here I can see, and then I'm saying this equals to epsilon. And I don't like this expression. Why? Because I need to solve a quadratic equation and it's not an easy way to approach this problem. So we need to find another approach, how I can figure out to write my delta in terms of epsilon. And what we can do, because this is math and we have uh, freedom of choice, we can say, let's take some particular delta. And in this case, I want to take delta equals to 10. 
So if you're gonna take delta equals to 10, then from here I will know that x plus 5 is gonna be less than 10 plus 10, less than 20. And then I can come back to this uh, inequality. And then I know this is gonna be less delta times 20 equals to epsilon. And from here I can get that my delta is equals epsilon over 20. So uh, we're almost done. Why? Because if you want to show that this limit exists in terms of epsilon and delta, we want that for any epsilon there is exists a delta. And we know that the first thing that I need to say is that if we take delta equals to 10, then is this for any epsilon this is going to be true? What do you think? And the answer is no. Why? Because, for example, let's take epsilon equals to like 400. If our epsilon is equal to 400, we will get that this delta is equal to 20. Because 400 over 20 is just equal to 20. But when delta is 20, this inequality where is it? This inequality doesn't hold. Why? Because this inequality holds if and only if delta is going to be equal to 10 or less. So what we should do, if we want to consider like this is true for any epsilon, then we need to make a choice. We need to say, uh, make our delta equals to the minimum value of 10 or uh, epsilon over 20. So right now we know that if you're going to choose epsilon such that our delta is going to be uh, less or equal than 10, then we are fine. But if we choose an epsilon that our delta is going to be bigger, what we're going to do, we're going to just take the smaller value such that uh, this inequality is going to hold. So from here, we basically, we are done. Why we are done? Because if you're going to give me epsilon, then my choice of delta is going to be the minimum of delta or epsilon over 20. Thank you for watching.